right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from beautiful blue skied San Diego as usual. And today I am joined by Sam Schuette, who is up in Cincinnati and apparently beautiful, since, beautiful weather in Cincinnati too. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty springtime weather here, so can't complain. Thanks. All right, Sam founded Unstoppable Software because he wanted to do software right. So when clients hire them, they get a bolt-on, ready-to-go software development factory, <laughs> complete with foremen working on the shop floor and a structured software development methodology in place. And who doesn't want that, given that uh, there are so many people who've gotten into software development uh, in the last while with these new uh, you know, technologies and web technologies that are making it seemingly easier for people to produce things, but they don't have have the methodologies, the experience, the organization to back it up. And as I always say, your software will ultimately reflect the type of organization that builds it, right? It's very true. I mean, you, if you do it right, you can really kind of capture a lot of your DNA of the organization in the way you build the system and how it works, right? So. Yeah. So it depends on your DNA. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is... Uh, some technology insights, uh, building a, a consulting business and sales and marketing automation. Um, okay, so Sam, when you built your, started to build your consulting organization, obviously based around technology, what did you do differently that maybe you saw other people um, were doing that you didn't think was the optimum way of doing it? Uh, that's a good question. So I think um, one key thing, so we've been in business about 12 years, a little over mm -hmm. 12 years now. Uh, and I think, you know, when we started, what we see in most of the market, when you look at quote unquote consulting companies and technology, they're really just staffing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's really no oversight or management or guidance or, or any kind of checking on, checking in on the quality of the developer or, or team that you put in place. Usually it's, it's kind of an easy money thing, right? You, you find, yeah. you know, your recruiter, you put somebody in a spot uh, and the client, it's like good luck, right? So mm -hmm. we always, from the beginning, wanted to be a project-based shop where, you know, it's really our responsibility to deliver the solution. And it doesn't, you know, I, th I think it's a bit nuts to sort of expect your customer to have all the ability to manage those developers themselves when that might be part of the thing they're missing, right? Yeah. Uh, and so that goes back to what you were talking about uh, in your intro, the factory floor and the foreman type concept a little bit, um, you know, where we're just kind of trying to get... Uh, a great solution out the other side and not expect you to know how to manage a development life cycle or something like that. Yeah. Well, I think part of the problem has become that although, although uh, some of the technologies may have become easier, as we said, on the surface to leverage mm -hmm. um, it, the, the solutions and the way business operates in some ways have got, has gotten more complex and a lot of the, core competencies have become very specialized. So it's almost impossible for many companies to be able to do this kind of development because of all the moving, uh, moving parts and the fact that you need some niche player, niche people with core competencies that you're never going to use full time. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, there's been this big, of course, revolution in the last, say, 20 years or whatever it's been now around agile and all this sort of methodologies. Mm -hmm. And you know, before then you had enormously high failure rates of projects, software projects, but even still the numbers are about 50, 50, right? you know, they're not, right. it's not fixed. It's not a fixed problem. And I think to your point of these technologies getting easier. So, okay. So now you've got technologies that anybody can teach themselves and, and say, yes, I know Python. Yes. I know, you know, JavaScript or something like that. And how can you really, in, how can you really check that? How can you really know that? Because mm -hmm. yes, they can get certifications, but, some of those certifications are super easy to get or not totally right. reliable, uh, you know. And so that all what that all creates is is it's like yeah, there's it's easier to learn learn those tools and learn those systems, but that doesn't mean you're going to succeed at it. Uh, and, and how do you really figure out how to get past that? Yeah, and obviously a big part of that then is the methodology that you use and the best practices that you use and how you manage the, the process. And I think that's obviously where in many ways, not just the uh, the quality resources you put into place, but that's where consultants can really bring value like yourself is because of the methodology, the tools, the best practices and the management of the whole process. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just kind of just like with sales, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it takes more than, I mean, if you go buy uh, a CRM, 
and say, okay, our problems are solved. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's not all you need. You have to, there's all these human sort of soft elements to it. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a great book on consulting that I love called secrets of consulting by Gerald Weinberg. And he, you know, I think he has all these laws in there, laws of consulting. And one of them is, you know, no one, no matter what anyone tells you, it's always a people problem. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's yeah. true with software too, yeah. you know, and, and, and that process, because, because I've seen companies that will hire incredible, incredibly smart software developers, technologists, and salespeople for that matter, right? And burn them out and, and yeah. get no productivity. Uh, and it's like, it was not, there, there was nothing wrong with that person, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, getting that process in place and, and then tweaking that so that it fits your organization is important. Uh, you, can't, mm -hmm. you can't require an organization to jump across the Grand Canyon to improve, right? Yeah. Because they're not going to be able to make it. Exactly. It's kind of like I've always used the, the, the example. It's you always hear companies say we have a communication problem. So let's get a, let's put in place a communication software. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, then you just have a communications problem that is enabled by software. You don't yeah. actually, you haven't solved the problem because to your point, you're not solving the underlying people issue or whatever it is that's standing in your way. Um, so how do you, uh, so how do you address that when, when you work with clients, like how do you, um, help them understand that it's not, it's not just a software solution. It's a, it's also a people and a change management solution. I mean, I think by, you know, we, we try to approach things in a very strategic manner and really talk to them about like, you know, what are the business pressures this is creating mm -hmm. or causing and, and why that might be, what are they, what's their gut feel about it? What, you know? What have they seen? What are people saying? You know, so it's, it's not just about coming in and saying, well, let me look at the code and I can tell you everything that's going on. Right. Um, so I think you have to be very strategic about it and develop that plan, um, you know, and, and, and ultimately figure out what aspects makes a person a successful uh, employee for your, for your organization. Like, what are you really looking for? Right. Um, for a lot of our customers, they will have, uh, they'll, they'll try to hire sort of a really high end developer to come in to do just kind of maintenance work, you know, right. um, when it really doesn't make sense to do that. It, it makes sense to maybe outsource that maintenance work and in some way that you can really control, control costs, um, or have, uh, junior developers that, that have a resource and a mentor they can go to for help when they need it. Right. Um, and so, uh, or someone who's maybe not even a developer. Maybe you need somebody who is a end user support person mm -hmm. because 99% of your problems are people don't know how to log in and use the thing. Yeah, you know, and you're yeah. paying a software developer to do that kind of support. It doesn't make sense. You know? Yeah. And I think obviously part of the problem here is too, is that it's, it's people who aren't familiar with with um, software development, aren't familiar with the different types of software developers, aren't different, aren't sure. familiar with what their skill sets are, can very often put the wrong person, as you say, hire the wrong person or put the wrong person in the wrong place. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely true. And I mean, and I think, you know, folks need a resource to help figure that out, you know, which is a big, a big part of what we do. I think when we are, when we are working in sort of hybridized teams of our own staff and the client staff, tr try to figure out, you know, uh, and advise them on that. Uh, because ultimately, I mean, you're right that, you know, you can't expect people to understand software and, and it's important not to talk down to the customer, yeah. or to clients and say like, well, you know, agile, blah, 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 extreme programming or, or, you know, .NET, Java, whatever. I mean, nobody really knows. It doesn't really matter what any of that means. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and you shouldn't have to, uh, get a computer science degree to know how to work with a consulting company. Right. So it's yes. more just about, I mean, we try to turn a lot of questions into dollar and cent things. Uh, okay, you're saying you're having this problem. What is it costing you? You're saying you're, you need this feature. What is that going to gain you? And, and try to guide them along along that those terms because people do understand money. I mean, mm -hmm, that is yes. one universal thing in business. <laughs> they understand that, you know, if they're paying uh, a bunch of money for, say, an off-the-shelf product and they're not getting their return on it, they, they can understand that, you know, and the technology doesn't really matter or shouldn't. Yeah. And I think that's a great point that you raise here. And I think that's a great piece of advice for anybody who is in or trying to get into the consulting game is that uh, when you're, when you're working with a prospect or a client, you don't want to come in and overwhelm them and make your, your job isn't to make me, uh, 
understand how little I know about software or how ignorant I am on this, you know, or maybe because all you're going to do then is get my defenses up and I'm going to be very unsure about things. Your job is to, is to make me trust that you have the solution to the business problem I'm trying to address. Yeah, I mean, the sales training and, and management training, I've, I guess, and consulting training I've done is, mm -hmm. you know, that, that product knowledge and, and industry expertise can be intimidating, right? And it makes sense. I mean, if you walk in to buy a, a car in the auto lot yeah. and you're not really know much about cars and all they talk about is, you know, dual overhead cams or in, in <laughs> fuel, what kind of fuel injectors it has or something, you're, if, if you're a soccer mom looking at a, a comfortable yeah. minivan, it's, it's going to very much intimidate you right and and that is a big mistake i think a lot of salespeople make is they think they can come in and just you know blow the customer away with how brilliant they are and and really it it bugs people it makes it makes people mm -hmm. uncomfortable in the end because they feel like uh you know all they did is talk over me and and made me feel you know an inch tall yeah and at the end of the day all i want to do is i want to feel that i trust you that you seem to know I mean, I'm hiring you for your expertise, so I would assume, so the thing is, I'm hiring you because you know more about this than I do. If I did, then I wouldn't need to hire you in the first place. Um, yeah. and, and then the job is for us to become collaborative partners. So uh, in, re in reality, I mean, it's up, to you, it's up to you, right, to just to demystify the whole thing. Yeah, and I think it also, I mean, a lot of what you said there ties into sort of your, your offering model, your product model, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, because in, in our case, if we walk in off the street into a room full of strangers wearing suits and ties and we say, you know, we're really great. We know our stuff. Here's a bunch of jargon. Here's a bunch of keywords. Here's a proposal for five hundred thousand dollars. No one is going to hire us for that. Now, maybe maybe that works, you know, if, if you're IBM or Microsoft or some, you know, larger, uh, you know, Boston consulting group type or something. Right. Uh, you can ride on your brand name. But I think, you know as you said, you got to build that trust, right? Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to start with some small amount of money, small engagement, be it, even if it's a product you're buying online, what do, what do you get? Right. A 30 day trial, a free something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or your money back or something. And that lets you, them say, okay, I'll spend a thousand dollars, you know, and I'll see. And if they get, uh, you know, if you over deliver then and they get a ton of return out of that, they're going to feel a lot more confident uh, working on the real meat of the project with you. So that's, mm -hmm. that's key. I think. Yeah, and I think this is a great time for um, for organizations like yours, because I do think that uh, more and more companies are waking up to the fact that you that the best model in many ways is to have the employee, your full time employees as the core competencies for your business and then to use variable resources as needed for things that are outside your your core competency. And, and I think that's a model that people are much more are getting more and more comfortable with. And especially now that we're working and we're living in such more virtual, um, a virtual environment where, you know, I could hire you and your organization, but we may never ever meet and maybe just on the, you know, on the deliverables. I think this is a great time because I think people are becoming more comfortable with that whole model, as I said, variable and virtual. Yeah. And, and, you know, the big, of course, drumbeat you hear out there for consulting companies and all companies is, you know, specialize, niche yeah. down, you know, become more narrow, all these sort of things, which I, I think it can be wise advice. And, and you know, there's a company here in Cincinnati that uh, for years has had, you know, hundreds of software developers. And now they said, like, look, we're, we're not a software company. We are we, we do this. This is what we produce, this product. And we want to know we're the best in the world at every single little detail about this product. But why are we trying to be a software company too? Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's interesting because those companies have looked at themselves and said, "We make great products. Our customers love it, and our apps are terrible. So because <laughs> they're not very good at it, right? I mean, they've, right, they've struggled right. and they've spent. You know, they they're over budget. They're spending too much money. They're they're overdue or they're you know missing deadlines. So you know, it's like what, what's the disconnect here? And it, it's because you have to dedicate a lot to becoming great mm -hmm. at something, right? Um, yeah. and, and not all, and some big companies are both, you know, they're both great mm -hmm. at the software and whatever it is they make. But, um, you know, I, I think it's also like, well, why are they spending money? there doing that, you know, cause they could spend it on better product research, you know? Yeah. And like I said, I mean, the more focus you put on your core competencies, then, uh, it's easier than for you to leverage the real expertise for the things that aren't your core competencies rather than as we have seen 
many times is when you try to have a core competency and then do other things, you just do, either do those other things very in a very mediocre fashion or worse yeah. in a terrible fashion. Well, and, and I think the key there is, you know, if you have, so like in our case, if you're, if you're a vendor of custom software development projects mm -hmm. and, and stuff, and you've got, let's say you've got a company that makes, uh, you know, hand soap or something, some commercial product. Uh, so they know everything in the world, like the exact pH, they know, you know, the full product knowledge and, and they know how, cu how customers consume their brand, how they want to order and all this. Mm -hmm. Well, so they're really, really deep experts in their niche and we're really, really deep experts in our niche. So how do you talk together? So the message gets across, right? Because those, those individuals will be speaking different languages, you yeah. know? And I think that's where, you know, like I actually think that's where I bring a lot of value to the equation on those projects because I can sort of straddle that fence because I have a computer science degree and I have an MBA. And so I can help trains like that because it's a lot of translation, you know, yeah. into what they actually want. And the software guys are like, oh, that's what they want. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't understand what's, that's what they meant. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and if you don't have that communication, then it's really not necessarily any better than trying to do it in-house, right? So Yeah. And I think that's incredibly important what you just said and underline that is that you definitely need somebody to translate between the two. And I think that's where most things go awry is it's in the it's in the miscommunication or the you know, developers hear one thing, the business folk hear another thing. And then what gets delivered doesn't meet either their expectations. Yeah, yeah my mantra is, you know, good software is about communication. Yeah, that's it. absolutely. Great place to end, Sam. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. Um, all of uh, all of Sam's information and his bio information, all of that will be in the link um, below. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your organization. Yeah, so Un Unstoppable Software is the organization. Uh, as I said, we're, we're a custom software development team and we bolt on to your organization to help you rapidly deliver new solutions. Um, we're based in Cincinnati here. Um, and uh, we've worked with, I think, eight different Fortune 500 companies now to wow. build these types of solutions, as well as all the way down to one-man companies who are, who are startups looking to take a new product to market. Um, so pretty diverse in our, in our client background. Um, a lot of focus in manufacturing, uh, engineering, and healthcare are kind of some of our main verticals. Um, and yeah, it's just unstoppablesoftware.com if people want to check it out. Yeah, unstoppablesoftware.com. Very simple, easy to remember. And I would definitely recommend people check it out because I do, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of outsourcing things that are not uh, core to your competency. And to be honest, uh, uh, there are, as we said earlier, there are so many specialities within software development right now that it makes sense for you to go and find uh, somebody who can manage this process for you. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.